So why is it that Georgia, South Carolina, and North Carolina is home to just 10 million people along the coast, combined between all three states? I mean, this is very different from other northeastern states and even in Florida. So if you compare the numbers and the statistics, what's really going on here? Why aren't more people living in this area of the East Coast? Now, some of you are watching and you're going to get mad because I'm spilling the beans. Now, look, here's the truth and here's the facts, because this channel is all about helping you to avoid the pitfalls that are costly. So give me a thumbs up if you're good with that. Now, today we're going to look at and inspect this relatively empty region of the United States. The coastal communities of Georgia, South Carolina, and North Carolina are relatively empty when you compare them to the hustle and bustle of the northeastern states and even in Florida. And this doesn't make much sense. Why are there not more people living on the coast in this part of America? Well, to start with, this region has always had some unique features that have both helped and hindered population settlements throughout history. But now, that's changing. And some people are just finding out about these hidden gems. Now, most of the coastal areas in these southern states feature wide sandy beaches, flat plains, and some areas have barrier islands, and other areas have immense salt marshes. But the absence of natural harbors along this stretch, compared to many northern states, this means that these areas throughout history never developed into maritime hubs with limited international trade, which in turn led to less industrialized development and less big city urbanization. That is, until recently. Now, the flora and the southern sand plains features southern species of loblolly pine, sweet magnolia, wax myrtle, bald cypress, and white cypress in the salt marshes. But when you travel further inland, these southern states, the geography changes. I mean, it's low mountains, which presents its own set of challenges for the early settlers. In historical geography in this area has influenced the types of industries that have thrived here. Now, the lay of the land and the area offered plenty of opportunities that always centered around agriculture. You know, with warm weather in this region, this provides the ideal climate for large-scale agriculture. Now, traditional crops like tobacco, especially throughout the North Carolina and South Carolina areas, and also cotton and rice were traditionally grown in South Carolina and Georgia. An interesting fact is water has always been a major factor for people choosing where to live. Historically, humans have chosen to live near rivers for water supply as well as navigational purposes. So it's no wonder why it's always been the factor when establishing new settlements. The evolution of human population, both before and during the industrial age, has increased those coastal areas, especially near ports. And many times these areas were used as centers of commerce for trade. Now just think back in history and consider developments of like Athens, Venice, or Rome. Transportation of agriculture in the southern states played a significant part in the development of towns and in cities. Savannah, Georgia and Charleston, South Carolina are still major ports today. And cities like Atlanta, Charlotte, and the Raleigh-Durham Research Triangle have emerged as major metro areas with diverse economies. Many of these southern coastal towns have been around for hundreds of years, but did not attract the dense populations like New York City or Philadelphia or even Miami, Florida. Population density is much less when compared to other regions of the country. Today, people are exploring and finding these areas, and tourism is a major industry in these southern states. In only the last 50 years have we seen population of coastal towns and villages that have grown and had this growth spurt. The U.S. population has become more affluent and the average everyday people can afford beach vacations. Now many of these people started the visit during spring breaks and now they're coming back as retirees. They're going back to where they had fun times of their youth and they're moving to areas like Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, which has been booming for the last few years. Now, many have said after moving south, they find that people are friendlier and you really don't have to move to a big city. Today, the port of Savannah, Georgia is the third busiest seaport in the United States and the largest single container terminal in North American continent. The port of Charleston, South Carolina is the eighth busiest container facility in the U.S. with huge amounts of cargo passing through Charleston on transport trains. And it's not like hurricanes have wiped out the natural landscape or the settlement patterns of Georgia, South Carolina, and North Carolina. If that was true, then why is it that Florida is still on the U.S. map? So where do hurricanes hit the most in the United States? Probably comes as no surprise that Florida has been hit by more hurricanes than any other state. Now, Florida hurricane numbers, along with out of control insurance costs and higher cost of living, have been driving many retirees to consider other states of Georgia, South Carolina, and North Carolina. They have to reconsider their choices because more than 41% of all hurricanes have hit the U.S. since 1851. They hit Florida. I mean, wow. 
Florida also has the record for 500 tropical or subtropical cyclones that have affected Florida. The second most hurricane prone state is Texas, which may not come as a surprise for many people, either since the Gulf of Mexico is known for producing some pretty fierce hurricanes. The state that draws confusion is North Carolina, which has been hit by 55 hurricanes since 1851, making it the third most hurricane prone state in the US and the most hurricane prone state that does not border the Gulf of Mexico. Let's take a look at the rest of the top 10. These are the hurricanes from 1851 to 2018, and these are the top 10 hurricane states on record. Number one, Florida had 120 hurricanes. Number two is Texas with 64 hurricanes. Number three is North Carolina with 55 hurricanes. Number four is Louisiana with 54 hurricanes. Number five is South Carolina with 30 hurricanes. Now, can you see why people choose this area as an alternative to Florida? Number six is Alabama with 24 hurricanes. Number seven is Georgia with 22 hurricanes. Number eight is Mississippi with 19 hurricanes. Number nine is New York, 15 hurricanes. And number 10 is Massachusetts, 12 hurricanes. The empty Southeast states are fascinating region of the country. Now, some people claim that South Carolina is not populated because it's where they hide all the F-35s. Next, we're gonna explore the issues and problems with each state individually. But first, if you're enjoying this video, hit that subscribe button. There's more videos here just a single click away. The South Carolina population rally is tiny when compared to other metro areas, according to the worldpopulationreview.com. Now, just take a look at the city of Charleston. Inside the city limits, the population of only 157,450, and the city of Columbia has 146,303 people. Now, many locals do complain about Columbia, South Carolina traffic, but they need to really visit these big cities in the United States to see what traffic really looks like. I mean, for example, New York City has a population of 8,740,647. So South Carolina is basically empty compared to those numbers. For the most part, people enjoy relaxed South Carolina vibe. They enjoy the access to beaches, low taxes, low cost of living. But just remember, in places with low cost of living, jobs typically don't pay as much as similar jobs in other states. Textiles and furniture industries were huge back in the day, but all their production went overseas years ago, causing a big recession in these southern states. But recently, companies like Volvo, Hyundai, Bosch, and Boeing Dreamliner have moved their main production plants to South Carolina and many have moved a significant portion to Charleston, South Carolina area, probably because of the access to ports. Google Data Center is in Charleston, and it's also home to the Navy and the Air Force base, making a big military presence. South Carolina tourism is still a huge industry, but there's way more diverse job market in the Charleston area. And that could be why many people complain about the crazy high rent and skyrocketing home prices in Charleston, South Carolina area. The population has exploded in and around the suburbs of this town for over the last 25 years. And now the entire area has close to 800,000 who are spread out through the Charleston metro area. Now many say that there's no place more beautiful than the South Carolina coast. And I know people will be mad when I even mention it where I live. Locals will say, shh, don't don't let others know we're living in the land of pleasant living. Hey guys, I live in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, and I apologize in advance, I'm sorry, but I've got other videos here on this channel about that. Hilton Head Island is a resort area further south than Myrtle Beach, and real estate prices in Hilton Head are higher, but the bigger issue in Hilton Head and the Bluffton area is it's located in the southern part of the state known as the Low Country. Now, choose carefully in that area, Low Country. Low land, salt marshes, and swamps. And that may be why this part of South Carolina is not as populated. The intercoastal waterway and beachfront property in North Carolina, South Carolina, and Georgia is always super popular. But let's talk about North Carolina. Wilmington, North Carolina has the 10th busiest port on the East Coast, yet has a population in the city of only 125,388 people. Fayetteville has a population of 207,281. But travel further inland in North Carolina, and you'll find that Charlotte is the biggest city in North Carolina with a population of 928,154. Raleigh, North Carolina, 489,977. Greensboro, 304,895. Durham, North Carolina, 297,430. And Winston-Salem, 252,206. Georgia may be on your mind, but on the other hand, it is a dominant transportation center. Atlanta is a major airline hub. 
Since 1998, the Hartsfield-Jackson Airport has been the world's busiest airport by passenger traffic. In 2022, the airport had over 93.6 million passengers, and that's the most of any airport in the world. One reason it's grown may be that the airport doesn't experience major snowstorms, and it's far enough inland so it doesn't get hit by many storms. The city of Atlanta population is 512,047 people. Augusta, 204,612. Columbus, 197,800. And Macon, 156,621. Now what's interesting about these coastal regions of these three states is that they're now in areas that are growing like crazy all of a sudden. In Horry County, which includes Conway, South Carolina, and Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, this area has seen some of the most rapid population growth in the state, a 52% increase since 2010. Charlotte, North Carolina has driven a surge in population across the state line into Fort Mill, South Carolina, and elsewhere into Lancaster and York counties. While many areas lack the same population as other cities, this area of the empty East Coast may soon be filling as retirees find these communities and once hidden gems. Now, if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel. My real estate team is here to help you to avoid the pitfalls that are costly and find your hidden gem. So pick up the phone, give us a call at 843-839-9870. You have questions, we have answers. And if you subscribe, I'll see you in the next video. Take care, guys.